We got, um, before we do that, let's go to the Lord in prayer here before we open up. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with each one here and their families, Lord, as we, we still have some out that's uh, dealing with COVID and different uh, illnesses, and we just pray that uh, you be with them, your hand be upon them. Traveling mercies, Lord, for those who are out, our pastor there, he is uh, on his way back home. I checked there with his wife this morning, and we just pray that he have a safe trip return um, back here, and Lord, we just thank you for being with each one of us this week, and the beautiful fall callers, Lord, and the rain that we, that we needed, Lord, and we just give you all the praise and glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. The song. You sure? Okay. Now we'll, we'll go ahead with uh, our worship song, Come Thy Almighty King. If we get everybody to stand and sing that. Page six. Thank you, Amy. Our next song of worship is Standing on the Promises, 175.
Thank you, Amy. You may be seated. <clears throat> okay, what we got here? October the 31st. Today we will have Mr. Mike Bland speaking with the Gideons here for the Gideons today for us. There will be a love offering to help support the Gideon's outreach ministry, supplying new Bibles and New Testaments, which Mike will be talking about that here when we turn that over to him. Let's see, Sunday, uh, November the 7th, time change. The clocks go back one hour. Next Sunday, one hour backwards. So November the 14th is the second Sunday offering for the emergency fund. Remember, put them in the little envelopes that way that, that they know what that's for. And the 15th of November at 6.30 p.m., there's a board meeting. And Saturday, November the 20th at 12 o'clock, adult fellowship. And then we pack in the Thanksgiving food boxes. And you need anything else for that? Okay, we're going to have her say something for that. that it? Okay, well, we got, uh, she said, uh, there is a list back here for donations for the uh, Thanksgiving uh, food boxes. On November 20th, uh, you just have to have that food here before noon. Right now, there's seven names on the list to receive that. So, uh, if you have someone out there that you know of, then get with Rachel and, and let her know so that we can... Uh, get that on the list and get them out there. And uh, we're also going to be doing the Samaritan shoe boxes. Don't know the date yet on the final turn-in, but... It's that, right around the 20th. Is when okay, right around the 20th, and uh, Selita will be speaking on that when they get back also. Okay. All right, and um, Thursday, November 25th, Thanksgiving Day, coming right around the corner. Any other prayers, announcements, praises? Go ahead. His prayers for Greg Terrell continued. He is home, uh, and they got him up, and he's walking and stuff, so he's, he's happy for that. We spoke with Deb, Homer and Debbie Davis. Uh, they get to speak with them, and uh, they're in good spirits. He's trying to recruit. And uh, Ruth Ann Kessner, but she's from Manassas, Virginia, as Teresa's uh, cousin. And this is really hard on her. And my stepbrother, Roy Kessner, and he's... Uh, a local from the area here, he, it's just knocked him down. They will not let him go back to work until January, maybe. And he's on oxygen and all that. And of course, if you know Roy, he's not trying to stay there. And he made it worse on himself the other day, riding a tractor and that put him down again. So just pray for him. Any others this morning? Go ahead. Thelma's eyes doing better. That's a praise. I can see. You can see. <laughs> That's a good thing. Any others this morning? Okay, we want to also remember our, ours on uh, 
our church prayer list, this whole whole list. That's, I like how he did this. You can take it out and you have it with you and uh, you can put it in your Bible and, and pray upon. There's, there's many things there. Can't hardly stand to watch the TV anymore with all the stuff that's going on. So just pray pray for everyone here. Pray for the world and, and uh, that there will be an intervention on that. There's no others here this morning. Let's go to the Lord here in prayer. Our Father in heaven, King of glory, faithful Father, we adore your name and we glorify you forever. It is by your will that we are alive and healthy and you have given us the grace to converge. You promised us that wherever we call upon your name, you will answer us with your presence. Come into our midst, our Father, and worship with us. Visit us with your overwhelming presence and make your blessings abundant in our service today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we have a call to worship. If I can get Ms. Brenda to start that. We all just join in and say that together, please. Okay, let's see. Our prayer or offering here this morning, we'll do, um, we have a song, 234 in the blue hymnal. And um, the way we've been doing it with the COVID stuff, there's a box in the back and a box up front. So you just get up any time you want during the song or whatever, or after the service or before and just... You can place that in there, just trying to keep the, the germs down on that right now. So it's uh, 234, Wonderful Words of Life.
Okay, at this time I'll be turning it over to Mike Bland here to bring the message for the Gideons this morning. And he's also volunteered to do the benediction for us at the end. So we'll have a worship song after he is uh, finished speaking, and he will also do the benediction for us. Thank you for that. good to be here this morning. I visited this church several times, usually with my wife Shirley when she was uh, uh, filling the pulpit here for a few Sundays, and so I got to uh, listen to her, and now she gets to listen to me, so, but it is good to be here this morning. I'm going to uh, read some verses out of uh, John 14, 1 through 6, but first let's have a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you this morning, the privilege that we have to come and to share about the Gideon ministry here in this church. Father, I just pray this morning that you would guide and direct and that people would understand the uh, tremendous impact the ministry has had. And Father, we just uh, ask that what we uh, say will bring glory to you because it's only through your power these things are accomplished. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. John 14, 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You know, we receive many testimonies around the world of how people are impacted. This one is from a Muslim who uh, was a spiritual leader, an imam in the Muslim uh, religion. Sayer writes that his grandfather was a king in Sierra Leone and his father was a senior government minister. As a result of his family heritage, Sayer was well educated in both Arabic and English. In his early 20s, Sayer began his in-depth study of the Quran, eventually becoming a well-respected imam in the community. He spent long hours teaching the Quran and often experienced terrifying encounters with demonic beings. One evening as he was resting alone, a bright light filled his room. He felt the presence of a person appear in the room, but he could not make out the face through the intensity of light. However, Sayer was not filled with fear, rather a familiar peace like he was meeting for the first time someone who already knew him well. He asked for the person's name, but the response he heard was simply, no one comes to the Father except through me. The next morning, a Gideon offered him a free New Testament. Although he had never read the Bible, his heart told him that the words of the stranger in his room the previous night could be found in that book. So Sayer took the free gift. When he opened it, he was shocked to see those same words, letter for letter, were written on the page. He knew then it was the Lord who had visited him. Seir wasted no time in humbling himself in prayer to accept Jesus as his Savior. Seir knew that he could, would have to leave his father's house due to the position of the family and the government and the religious community. But God continued to send him grace. Eventually, he was able to return to share the gospel with his community, which today is a primarily Christian-based town. Sayer is now an assistant pastor in Sydney, Australia, where he is near completing his theological studies at a local college. He uses his background and knowledge of the Islamic traditions to reach others of the Islamic faith and, sp and speak the bright light of Christ to their lives. You know, God has given us a promise in Isaiah 55, 11. 
He states, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So we as believers have the assurance that God's word is powerful and living and will accomplish its purpose of bringing others to a saving knowledge of Christ. God's word also commands for us as believers. Christ told his disciples in Matthew 28, 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. And in Acts 1, 8, we read, But ye shall receive power, and after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. It is clear that the Lord commands us as believers, giving us both power and responsibility to share the gospel message with others. That responsibility extends to all people, as stated in Acts 8, Acts 1.8, unto the uttermost parts of the earth. It's easy for us to understand how we can be a witness in our own community and uh, our family and so forth, but not many of us are going to be called to be a missionary or a witness in a foreign land. That's what I'm here to talk to you about this morning, to explain how your prayers and financial support of the Gideon's ministry allows you to be a partner in distributing the Word of God in 109 languages and being a witness in 200 countries around the world. The Gideon's International is an association of Christian business and professional men. It includes all different kinds of professions. Uh, I was a county administrator. I'm glad to say I'm retired now. Uh, farmers, insurance agents, and so forth. And we have one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to win men, women, boys, and girls to our Lord Jesus Christ. Members, uh, we are members of, a, we're non-denominational, being members of evangelical churches. We've accepted Christ as our personal Savior and endeavor to follow him in our daily life. Believe the Bible to be the inspired, infallible, inerrant word of God. You know, the ministry was started by three men in 1899. They were traveling salesmen. they purpose was to develop an association that could assist in evangelizing other men like themselves that were traveling and people that were traveling in hotels. So they established the association in 1899 and God has continued to bless the activities although he has expanded it greatly. Uh, expanding the ministry to 258,000 men and women, Gideons and Auxiliary in 200 countries. We attempt to uh, win others to Christ in two ways. The, the first is through uh, personal witnessing, uh, where individual uh, members uh, share the, the gospel with others. Uh, we use a personal worker's testament that are uh, purchased by members, and uh, it's just a uh, New Testament, Psalms and Proverbs. It has spiritual helps in the front, the plan of salvation in the back. And it's just a tool to help in personal witnessing. And then the second way is through uh, distribution of God's word in various areas of uh, uh, life's uh, lanes. You know, we're probably best known for placement of uh, this Bible in hotels and motels. And this is just a King James Version of the Bible. has a Gideon emblem, which is a, uh, a circle with a... Uh, little pot in there with a flame uh, and all the, the purpose of that is to show it was placed by the Gideons. We received a testimony from Denise Brown and she writes she was lost to God and addicted to drugs and associated only with people who did drugs and none of us ever mentioned the name of God except to curse or complain. I was destroying myself physically and spiritually Day after day, I could feel myself going downhill. Since I couldn't afford an apartment, I would crash with other junkies like myself who still had a roof over their heads. One day, I was feeling very ill and wanted to be alone. I checked into a hotel and got out my drugs, feeling utterly hopeless. 
I finally realized that if I didn't stop, I was going to die, and I felt like it would be soon. I sat on the bed and cried. Then I saw Gideon Bible on the shelf of the nightstand. That night, I asked God to give me an answer to my problems, not realizing how much he would bless me. I opened the Bible with my eyes closed and placed my finger down on the page. My finger landed on Matthew 7, 7, Ask, and it shall be given, given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and ye shall, it shall be opened unto you. So God gave me his answer. I left the hotel with the Bible in my suitcase. And I later called my folks to ask them if I could come back home. I returned home and went back to school. It was hard to adjust, and every night I would read the Gideon Bible to give me strength. When I turned off the lights, I would place the Bible under my pillow. I still have that Bible. I made a donation to buy other Bibles. I hope that there will be many people who pick up those Bibles and find the answers they need. You know, the Bibles placed in the hotels are, are uh, not intended to be taken by the residents, but, you know, the Gideons is about the only organization that you'll find that rejoices when someone steals their merchandise because we know that God will use that to change lives. You know, this Bible placed in a hotel, we usually will have them there for uh, six years. They'll be replaced sooner if they become soiled. Uh, and they tell us that it has the potential of reaching 2,300 readers during that period of time. Now, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that everyone that comes into a room is going to pick up the Bible and read it, but we trust the Holy Spirit will lead, and people like Denise Brown will pick those Bibles up and find the answers they're looking for. You know, after they're taken out of the hotels, if they're uh, usable, still readable, we'll use them in uh, jails and uh, Salvation Army homes and other places of, of distribution. The auxiliary uh, of the Gideon makes a, plays a very important role. Distributing God's word to doctor's office and nurses, off, and nurses and others in medical services. It's the little white testaments. The testaments are color-coded to just for record-keeping purposes. All of them are the same except for a little red testament that we give out in schools. And um, these have uh, spiritual helps in the front and a plan of salvation in the back. But the ones that we give out in the school many years ago, we were taken to court and was required to take the, plan, the spiritual helps and the plan of save, salvation out of that scripture since it was placed on, on public property. The following is a testimony regarding a, uh, a white testament, a nurse's testament. One day, while making distributions at Arkansas State University in Jonesboro, Arkansas, Richard, a Gideon from Jonesboro Southeast Camp, met a student named Casey. Her life was changed through reading a New Testament from 1968, and she shared the story with him. The New Testament originally belonged to her great-grandfather, whom she never met. At some point, it was passed by him to his son, Casey's grandfather. Casey's grandfather highlighted verses in the plan of salvation in the back of the testament and then read those verses to Casey each time they were together. He also explained to her how to accept Jesus as her Lord and Savior. In this way, a New Testament originally owned by her great-grandfather impacted the faith of at least three generations of Casey's family, the great-grandfather, the grandfather, and Casey herself. Later, when the family was dispersing some mementos and keepsakes, Casey saw and recognized the New Testament. She immediately knew it was an item that she wanted to keep since it was instrumental in leading her to Christ. Interestingly, her family heirloom is a white medical New Testament, although to her knowledge, no one in her family had been in the medical field, that is, until Casey herself. She is currently... Uh, studying to become a physical therapist. She now also has a college New Testament. Richard uh, shared with her that day. He encouraged her to use it and keep the well-worn New, New Testament from her grandfather and great-grandfather safe. Perhaps one day she will use one of those testaments to explain the plan of salvation to yet another generation. You know, my favorite area of our favorite distribution used to be in the schools. Uh, we've been closed to uh, distribution in Mineral County for uh, 
several years now, probably uh, close to, to eight or ten years. Um, is Hampshire open, uh, Mike, or do you? Okay. So some, some most schools um, in the nation, actually, a, a lot of them are closed. Many areas, they'll do a sidewalk distribution where they uh, meet the kids on, on the way to school, but that's almost in, impossible in a rural area. Kids are bussed in, so it's, it's very difficult to do those type of uh, distributions in rural areas. One answer to uh, not being able to distribute to schools has been the life book. This is a uh, uh, little book that's provided directly to the churches. It was intended to come to youth groups in the church. The church can go online to lifebook.com and they'll send, send the life book free of charge to the church. The idea is that, that you know, the, the young people, as they meet in either in school or other areas, they might be able to share those uh, with friends. Part one of it is basically an overview. It's an overview from creation to the birth of Christ. It talks about uh, creation, of course, the fall of man, the flood, the enslavement of the Hebrew people by the Egyptians, uh, Moses and the Ten Commandments, the blood sacrifices, the promise of a Savior, and the birth of Christ. And then the second part of it is simply the book of John. And at, at part three ta brings the reader to a point where it's asking them to make a si decision. It's what about you? I mean, basically, um, it gets the reader to think about by questions. Jesus asked his disciples who, they, who people said he was. And it asked the young person as they're reading this book, at this point, who do you believe Christ is? And then also it talks about the fact that without accepting Christ, uh, someone is eternally lost and brings that person to making a decision as to what they will do. Will they accept Christ or do they wish to continue as they are? And then for those, uh, of course, that accept Christ, there's a few first step helps as far as trying to uh, get them pointed to a church and so forth. And to sign in the back as to the fact that they have accepted Christ as Savior. And then there's a little section from notes from teenagers with problems and, and some of the things that they run into uh, in their daily life. So it's a great little tool uh, that can be used in, in schools. You know, one area that we've tried to uh, expand our dis distributions in Mineral County is um, uh, apple harvest, with the idea there is to try to give as many uh, testaments to young people with, as we can. This past year, of course, it was a reduced. Uh, year before, there was no distribution. This year, it was uh, kind of reduced with their activities around the fire hall, but we did give around 400 testaments out there. We were up to uh, Potomac State College uh, last, this past Wednesday, gave out uh, 340 testaments there. You know, in addition to the distributions in this country, God has opened the doors in 199 foreign countries with distribution of God's word in 109 languages. The Gideons differ from other missionary efforts in that uh, the work is carried out by local individuals. You know, the Gideons will go into a, to a country, meet with the church, and, and uh, get recommendations for membership and develop a, a camp, which is the local organization to carry out the, the work. Uh, we have Mineral County Camp here. Mike's in the uh, Hampshire County Camp. And, and we carry out the, the work of the Gideons here in the, uh, in the local area. One of the things that you know, it cuts costs, it's local people, there's no uh, cost for, for boarding those people, and more importantly, a lot of times a country may be shut down to outside missionary efforts, but with the Gideons being local, they can uh, usually continue to ship Bibles in and they can continue to do the work. We, we receive a lot of uh, testimonies uh, each year. One, one area of concern is, of course, uh, China. There's a lot of uh, Christian persecution there. 
Uh, most of the distributions that have been done in China has actually been done in the church because um, to evangelize on the street corner is illegal in China. And uh, the churches are actually have to be registered with the Communist Party. So it's, it's been a difficult situation in that country. Lydia and Nabu grew up in a region of Uganda hostile to Christianity. One day, Gideon gave her a New Testament that she initially hid in fear of how it would be received. As time passed, she felt the Holy Spirit leading and started to read. The words of the New Testament were different from any other book she read. When she came to John 3.16, she knelt and prayed to Jesus for the first time. <clears throat> the new this New Testament from the Gideons had an incredible impact on Lydia and her family. Now seven of her family members are Christians. Her brother is a pastor of a local church. Lydia fell in love with God's word, and she and her husband joined the Gideons so they could place and distribute the life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Praise God, his word changes lives and does not return void. Shortly after the breakup of the Soviet Union, there was a tremendous hunger in those countries uh, Russia for, for the Bible. Bibles would be placed in hotels and, and usually the first uh, person that stayed in that room would, would take that Bible home with them because it, it was limited as to uh, their ability to get, get Bibles there. Uh, I had read a testimony where one of the Gideons there in, in one of the towns there in Russia, they had made a distribution to the local police station and said a few weeks after the distribution, uh, one of the Gideons was driving down the road and they happened to notice that they'd stopped at a stop sign and, and happened to notice that up ahead, an uh, officer had someone pulled over. And he was talking to him and said, in a little bit, he reached in his pocket and he pulled out a testament and he began to share from, from that testament. So that really intrigued the Gideon, and he pulled over and waited until the officer was done and went up and talked to him. He says, I noticed that you were sharing out of the uh, testament what, what was happening. He says, well, after I received this testament and began to read it, I understood that if our people would read and follow its precepts, that we would be a better land. He said, when I stop someone, I tell them what they've done wrong, and then I began to share with them a little bit of, from the testament. It says they're willing to at least listen to what I have to say, I give them a warning. If they don't want to hear anything I have to say, I give them a ticket. So, <laughs> he has a unique way to, to uh, share the gospel there. You know, we also receive many testimonies where the Bible is disposed of. Here, Vladimir from, from Russia also uh, writes that both his mother and his wife passed away in the same year. The stress became too much, and he took to drinking. Vladimir lost his job, became homeless, and ate anything edible he could find in the garbage. Time passed, and soon days became months, and Vladimir was only feeling worse. His life felt pointless and void of hope. It was in a garbage can that Vladimir found a testament instead of food. Upon inspecting the testament, he understood it to be a holy book, one that should not be in the garbage. Vladimir took it home with him and began to read. Even though he didn't understand everything that was written, he soon sought out people who could explain it to him. And that's how Vladimir found a local church. He received meals, clean clothes, and showers there, so Vladimir started to regularly visit the church. Things slowly began to change. Vladimir stopped drinking and started to work again. The more he learned about God's word, the more he learned about his life's purpose. Vladimir was baptized in the, the following year, and to this day he keeps the testament with him, the one he found in the garbage. It was a book that gave him new life. Now God has tremendously blessed this ministry to give you an idea. It took 20 years to distribute the first one million copies of the Bible. Up until this past year, we were distributing 1.6 million every week. But with COVID, when it struck, the areas of distribution were shut down. Uh, this past year, our fiscal year ends in, in May, but in, in May 31st of 2021, the 12 months prior to that, 
our distributions were less than half, about 29 million down from over almost 70 million uh, a year. You know, the monies for purchasing those, those testaments, about 85% of it, uh, comes from the United States. Uh, when we go and receive a love offering from a church or um, you know, however that offering is received locally, 40% of it is kept by purchased Bibles here, 60% of it is used to purchase Bibles in other lands. And some of those areas are, are so poor that they, the people can't afford to uh, purchase scriptures. In many areas, when a uh, distribution is done, particularly at, uh, at schools, uh, they'll actually use those testaments as their reading books because they have no uh, books to, to, to use for the students to take home and to, to read. This is a uh, bilingual uh, testament. It's uh, Chinese and English, and they're very sought after for people that are wanting to uh, learn English. You know, and what better textbooks can we give uh, other countries than the Word of God? As Mike had said earlier, I understand there will be a love offering that will be uh, uh, taken this morning or um, for the Gideon ministry. The other way of giving is through a memorial Bible program. Now, these cards are provided to the church free from the Gideons. It's a very simple program to use. It's got a little envelope on the inside that you can fill out and advise of, of the uh, offering. The cards you can fill out and send it to either the family of a loved one that has passed or there's ones for thinking of you uh, in recognition of special events. And it's a, it's a very good way to either recognize a special occasion or to remember someone who has passed. And it makes a lasting impact on the world through the distribution of, of God's word. And 100% of an offering, whether it's through a love offering or through the uh, Memorial Bible program, goes to the purchase and placement of God's word. All the administrative costs of, of the ministry are paid for by the members and their, the dues and so forth that we, uh, that we pay. You know, oftentimes Bibles are placed and, you know, you understand, okay, we, we place a, a Bible, say, in a uh, penitentiary. In some of those areas, there's not uh, chaplains, uh, particularly in other countries, not so much here, but in other countries, there's not chaplains, there's not the activities, the television and so forth that uh, many of the prisons have here, and it's a very lonely place. And how can that word of God have an impact on that individual when there's no one there to encourage him. I'd like to share with you a uh, testimony from Jacob Koshby. He grew up in Singapore. He said he grew up in a normal or a nominal uh, Christian family. He thought of Jesus as a character in a Sunday school story and had no personal relationship with him. As he grew up, he had a driving ambition to be successful. Perhaps this ambition led into the world of drugs and smuggling. He was arrested and placed in, placed in prison. He said it was a very uh, bleak place. There was nothing to do. He said he smoked, but they didn't, they didn't allow cigarettes. But occasionally um, they would get tobacco smuggled in and they would roll their own from whatever paper they could find. <clears throat> he said one night he fell asleep smoking. He woke up, the cigarette had gone out, and he wanted to recover what was left of the tobacco and so forth, so he was unrolling the cigarette. And the smoothness of the paper caught his attention, so he held up that he could see what was on it. And it was a page out of the New Testament, and it, was, it had burned down to Acts 9-4, and he read, Saul, Saul, why persecuteth thou me? And he said at that point, he asked for a, a, another copy that he might read that story. And he accepted Christ from the reading of that single page. So God's word can have a tremendous impact. After he was released uh, from prison, he became active uh, with Teen Challenge. You know, as we look at our day-to-day -day life and, you know, how we are to 
show our love for Christ. And uh, I guess when uh, Christ was, uh, was talking to Peter in John 21, where he asked Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, yes. And Christ said, uh, feed my lambs. And he, and he confirmed that three times. So it's an example to us that for us to show our love for Christ, we are to share the gospel to others. Thank you this morning for the opportunity to, uh, to come and to share the Guinean ministry. And uh, I guess at this point, uh, we'll have um, uh, altar call. Is that our worship, your worship song? Yes, and that's page 431. I love to tell the story.
Mike, is there anything else you want to share before we dismiss? Okay, so the uh, Gideon offering is to go in the envelope, love offering. Okay, I'll just dismiss in prayer. Father, we just thank you for the privilege that we've had to come and to uh, share uh, the Gideon ministry with this church. We just thank you for the church, for uh, Pastor and his wife here. Father, we just pray that your blessing to be upon them, upon their uh, congregation. Uh, we just pray that they can continue to be a light unto this community. We pray for the family, the, the young man that uh, Mike was speaking of at, at Fort Hill and the situation there, and just pray that your direct, direction and peace would work out in that uh, circumstance. Be with the uh, pastor as he's traveling. Give him travel as mercies. Uh, be with each of us. Uh, give us protection, Father. And, Father, we just pray that you be with our country, that we might come back to the Christian values in which we were founded. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.